he is playing the Aurora. Everyone bans this champion for good reason. It is so oppressive to play against because of how difficult it can be to lock this champion down. Now, he has to go up against a composition that is so good at putting out these danger circles and might get caught right away, but there's no crowd oh control. Wait, FlyQuest didn't see that, but Fear did. They have first foot on what they want to do in response. They should be expecting FlyQuest to be putting some wards down. Whether or not they're expecting it in the try is going to be one of those questions. Philip is stepping up. FlyQuest, they've already gone for their invade. Now they're backing out. Ooh. FlyQuest trying to figure out what exactly is going on here. FlyQuest. This looks like it's setting up for a 4v4 right at the beginning of the game. Sajed yeah. and Chime have to be on their best behavior. But Ferex Starforge, they're coming oh. right on in. They spot him first. All right, they're in the bush. There are no wards there. Three members on one side, four members on the other. We're going to have an early fight, and they knew what was waiting in that brush. Ooh. A good amount of poke damage comes through the three members of FlyQuest as Fear looked to steal away this blue buff. Yeah, FlyQuest are not going to be able to get a whole lot there. A little bit surprised that Fearx Starforge decides to just deny any early game fighting, just saying, hey, we're just going to get our damage down. We're going to take our small lane advantages. We're going to be walking back on out. And as a place all goes for his dancing, knowing he just waits for the Spirit Fire to be up over and over again, making sure there is no play for FlyQuest early on in the game. And so Shaden, Going to be doing the Raptors, moving towards the top half of the map, looking like they might try to play for the top half, go for it and invade, because they still have a lot of vision on XU and his intended path. This is the blue, uh, the blue buff gets cleared by blue XU. Blue buff. I do want to take a moment to uh, double back over to Bradley when you were talking about him, the two chains and everything. It's important to note that he was a top laner when he earned those two chains. That was back on Team Liquid Academy slash Challengers. And, you know, back then it was uh, Coach Spawn from uh, Team Liquid who wanted to try him out over in the top lane and convinced him to uh, play for a uh, top Team Liquid over time, you know, when that uh, time came up and he moved on to a new team, he was itching to get back into his original role, which is the mid lane here. And earning not just three chains, but on two different roles would be tremendous for Bradley. Yeah. And so far, he's doing a good job. I mean, not that surprising that he's pushing around this Nasus as aggressively as he is. Uh, Nasus generally relies on getting a couple more points in those E's, and Bradley just you know, he can take a little bit of damage walking to the Spirit Fire because he knows that as a melee champion, a Blaze Olive just can't, cannot walk up. He cannot afford to trade any of these auto attacks. He's got to put points in the E, try and land them on both the minions and his opponent. And we can see that a Blaze Olive has taken quite a bit of damage, but is still hanging on to his potion at the very least. Now, both junglers try to have a pretty good idea of where their opponents actually are on the map. As XU goes ahead and backs away, not going to be trying to risk anything because the priority that exists in the top side for Surti. I do want to point out the uh, summoner spells taken over in the bottom lane. You're not going to have as much offensive summoner, so it means once you get the all-in from FlyQuest, it's Fear who are going to be at risk. You still have that Ignite on Chime. All at the same time, it's Shaden on this Viego who's going to be looking for a lot of these kills. So once the focus comes bot lane, you got to be very careful if you're Fear. Yeah. Look at that, Bradley burning all of his mana, but there's no Doran shield to come through. Maybe second wind is available for the mid lane, but here goes Winsome being aggressive. Yeah, Hook's able to land on Winsome. Instantly the exhaust goes down, he'll use a bandage toss, but dead to rights, it's first blood for XU. And XU is a huge part of this team for Fear X Starforge. Not only is he one of the more experienced, a very vocal player on this roster, but also the player who really needs to get a lot of his engages started for his team. We've seen how aggressively he can go for some of these flanks when he was playing the Vi. He's got to do the exact same thing now on the Monkey, because there's no uh, mobility on Sajed whatsoever. However, Bradley has lots of tools to be very tricky, and if you just crowd control him through all of those, he doesn't have a chance to do it. And it means so much for XU, especially in his redemption arc, to get back into the LCS. I feel like there was a lot of answers, a lot of questions that were unanswered that can only be answered from him, you know, winning the NACL and earning a spot back into yeah. the LCS. Good uh, time. Uh, what was that? Good chime. Oh, yeah, Chime's looking for an angle over here on the top side. Let's find Philip. 
Sardi needs to land more of his skills if he's going to find that stun, but Chime's still hovering. A lot of pressure currently being paid towards the top half of the map. We've seen Surdy have some pretty good games. The Gwen was looking great, but now not necessarily having the opportunity to go for a kill, but still just putting that pressure up in the top half means that it is very dangerous for Philip to walk up towards the uh, actual wave and just has to farm with that Q with those harpoons. That puts him in a very precarious position throughout all of this. But the rest of the map, Still doing all right for Ferrex Starforge. There was a pretty significant CS deficit for Instinct not that long ago. But as they caught the wave in the bottom side, he is right on back to an even position. And a Blaze Olive just building up some of that early magic. Because here's the first all in. The equalizer comes out. There's no level six for Exu, but there was for Surdy who burns the slicing maelstrom in response, expecting Exu to jump on him. Yeah, Exu doesn't have ult just quite yet. Looking for a re-entrance. Surdy will just hop back forward. I'm really afraid of the situation. All the meanwhile, FlyQuest Shaden does have some time with the Void Grubs. Will grab the first one. The response out of fear is was to very start the pincer onto him. Shaden still hovering around there, looking for an angle in. Winsome trying to spot out where potentially the members of FlyQuest are. Now hopping over the wall. Oh. Here comes Bradley. Will pop the ultimate and go between worlds. Philip cannot escape. Finally, it times out. Now looking for more, but it's completely empty for FlyQuest. Fear Starforge will be able to get away. But you also got to see a little bit of why Bradley's ultimate is going to be so strong. Your opponent cannot leave, and even though it's not a very long duration, that's still a long time in League of Legends. A couple of seconds can mean the difference between life and death. Everybody has to try and find their way out, but Instinct left alone for a little while on the bottom side of the map will pick up a fight for himself. And so the gold lead for Ferric Starforge is building up a little bit. A couple of plates, a couple of grubs. A place Olive comes right on back and is able to pick up all the farm that is pushing in towards his side of the map. It's not the longest, but as the leveling does come up for Bradley, you're going to see that uh, duration of the rift stay up even longer. Starts at at 2.25 seconds. By the time you get it to its max level, it's 3.25. So you get a whole extra second to try and uh, work with that ultimate work between worlds. Now taking a look at the map right now, I do want to eyeball this bottom lane because it was a very interesting pick to flex this Amumu down here, but uh, didn't really pay the best dividends when XC was able to show up, so we're looking for recovery from FlyQuest. Yeah, I mean, it's Amumu without Curse of Sad Mummy yet, so yeah. it takes a while for the Amumu to really be very aggressive. You don't have the same kind of just raw output on this champion like you used to, um, because of how powerful the Bandit Shots were. They're still strong, just like the... Uh, uh, stuns that you can throw out with them, but this time around FlyQuest, they still are in a strong position. They have the priority because Instinct never got the push again because uh, Winsome not necessarily there, and so Shaden going to be starting off this Dragon FlyQuest with one Grub, and this Dragon already starting up. There's not enough priority coming in from a Blaze Olive to make it worth their while. Blue Surprisingly, you have been seeing the Caitlyn Karma back off quite a bit, despite having uh, the ability to hard shove this lane. Now, you have to be very, very careful about approaching, especially as time gets closer and closer to that level six, and the Curse of the Sad Mummy will be available later. Now, a lot of that is because I'm going to keep looking towards Shade, and there is great burst for FlyQuest to start the resets. Yeah. So much of it is on Surdy, though, right? Bradley is going to be. Yeah, doing a lot of damage back and forth. It's not necessarily the most burst of mid lane mages that you're used to seeing, but Surdy has so much burst damage built oh, into yeah. his kit as the Maelstrom is there. And, ooh, gotta be very careful. Checking to make sure there's no counter gank from the backside from XU. Oh, uh -oh. oh, flash, but into it. Chime follows through with the bandage toss and it's an easy kill. Chain it onto Instinct. Will they continue with the dives? The root's going to be found, but I don't think they have the damage. No, they do. Shaden with the dive gets the double kill. And now your nightmares have begun. Shaden on a carry champion has kills. And the cardinal sin being committed by Winsome, flashing in a straight line and getting hit by the arrow anyway. Not enough to create enough distance because Chime flashes forward and continues the crowd control. And we get to see Shaden on this Diego. It's absolutely horrifying to watch. You just see him just stretch the craziest limits that you ever see. He's able to go for that dive and doesn't even take a lot of damage on the backside, finding two kills on one of his best champs. I mean, the more he gets, the more this is going to turn into like a Michael Myers movie, and he's just the villain that keeps getting up and taking all the side characters, leaving you for last. 
right now, Shaden, off to a, an incredibly tremendous start. And now the attention coming out from Chime is towards this top side. We do have a second spawning of the Void Grub soon. Yeah. I just want to go back to back when Shaden was playing, I believe it was on Evil Genius's uh, Academy yeah. back in the day, where he just continuously would put out games where he's like, oh, well, what if I just had 16 kills? What if I had 20 kills? <laughs> what if I just go absolutely nuts in the just game? Just five games in a row. Yeah, so many of them were on characters like this Diego, where he has so much control. And now, Fear trying to make sure that they do not give over enough grubs to the side of FlyQuest. But one going over to Shaden does to leave an opportunity for Fear to try and pick this one up. Make sure they get the four of them so they have a little bit of help as they go for all these sieges. But they're allocating a lot of members to do it because Instinct already here in the mid lane, not able to defend the bottom side. So that should be at least a flank getting picked up by Sajet.